Hey folks, what do you have here today is a 3D quad, um, the multi-Wii board and some Simon K speed controllers that have been flashed with that firmware that allow for reversing of the motors and 3D flight with, with the, that ability. Um, this video's intent or purpose is to sort of serve as a quick start guide, um, so to speak, just to get you in there quickly and easily with as little fuss as possible um, with the equipment that's used here or, sim sim or if you have any similar equipment. Uh, what this video is not, it's not to serve as a full manual or um, understanding of any of this hardware or software firmwares that are used. I so strongly suggest um, for correct function and safety that you uh, have a very good grasp and understanding of all this hardware and uh, firmwares or softwares that are used uh, to get this thing flying nicely, safely, and smoothly. Uh, but again, this video will serve as sort of a quick start guide to help get you put all this information together that you've already gathered and your understandings to kind of get you in the air quickly and easily. Uh, basically this is, is going to go uh, in three sections, this quick start. Uh, section one will co cover preparing your spectrum transmitter uh, for, the, uh, for this uh, multi-rotor. Um, section two will covering specifically the binding of uh, the satellite receiver for use with this multi-rotor. Um, it's a little bit different of a setup here than the standard, so um, that's going to be broke down into section two and explained there. And finally, uh, we'll end in step three or section three, which will basically cover how the uh, multi Wii board and the Simon Cake speed controllers and the firmware, everything kind of talks to each other and works and uh, what needs to be done to make that work nicely and smoothly for you. And also well, that, that section will also cover the proper uh, rotations of the uh, motors. Uh, but uh, all right, so that should be uh, sum it all up there. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. And uh, okay, folks, this is uh, going to be section one. Uh, this section uh, basically covers preparing your transmitter for use with the 3D reversible uh, rotation uh, motors on this quad. Uh, the radio I'll be using for the setup purposes here is a standard Spectrum DX8 uh, transmitter. Uh, if you have a DX7S, uh, it's going to set up very similar or a an older DX7 or DX6 or etc. You can look into your uh, manual for uh, features that will allow you to set it up to work similar to this. But as I said, this is going to um, work. Uh, this setup is on a DX8 transmitter. Basically the first step we're going to do is to set this into a helicopter mode. Uh, the reason why I like helicopter mode for these uh, airframes is that uh, your throttle hold is going to be in a position. These uh, reversible pit, reversible rotation uh, propeller quads work a lot like a collective pitch helicopter so having a throttle hold up in the same location as you might on a uh, helicopter uh, for throttle hold uh, works out very convenient and uh, how we're going to do that basically is we're going to power down the radio here and hold down the scroll selector as we power up uh, and we're going to go into after you found the model and which model you want to set it on we will be going to uh, model type to begin with we're going to set that up as a helicopter and after that you're going to need to tell it what type of swash. Swash type is going to be set at one servo normal. Um, there's a couple other selections there, uh, one, two, and three servos, but it's one servo normal, which is actually on this firmware for this radio, it's the default setting. Uh, so that's going to work nicely. Uh, also under the system setup menu here, we're going to go into switch select. And for the purposes of this video to keep things simple, we're going to basically inhibit all the switches for now um, except for the, and we're going to inhibit this, inhibit that, uh, channel and switch, inhibit everything except for one. Um, I'm going to go back and go to the flight mode, no, the throttle hold switch, which is right here. We're going to set that to the gear channel. The purpose of that means that when we activate the throttle hold switch, which is this switch here, this back switch, which our helicopter pilots are accustomed to using for their throttle hold. Um, basically what that's going to be doing is 
since we have sent that uh, switch to the gear channel, uh, as denoted here, hold is set to the gear channel. What that's going to do is it's going to toggle the endpoints on the gear channel, um, which is critical for the way this, this uh, multi-wee firmware works. The only way to shut the motors off is going to be a t by toggling via the gear channel. Um, and we, like I said, we have sent it to that throttle hold switch um, basically because these things fly so similar to uh, collective pitch helicopters in the way that they work. That tends to work out really well, especially if you're coming from a collective pitch helicopter flying. Uh, okay, and that is going to get basically get you through the um, basically this this system setup. Um, let's get out of this part of the menu. Now we're going to be in here. Um, we're going to go into the function list and go to servo setup. Uh, we will we need to reverse two of the channels here, um, so we're going to toggle to travel. And we're going to reverse, go to reversing, and we are going to reverse two channels. The only two channels that will be reversed here are aileron. So we'll select aileron. Oops, select aileron. Go down, select it, reverse it. Excellent. Go back up. The only other channel that gets reversed is going to be rudder. So we're going to select it. Go down, select, reversed. Great. All right, and that is going to complete the servo reversing functions under the function list that we'll need to do. Uh, now, as far as leaving your EPAs, which another term for that is your travels, um, for, for all intents and purposes, to keep things simple in this video, uh, everything is going to be left at 100%. Also, until you fly the machine, leaving the items at 100% on your travels um, we'll give you a kind of a baseline indicator of how you want to, uh, how it fly, how the machine flies and you can make adjustments thereafter uh, and tailor the setup with expos or rates of rotation via your radio or, um, the correct way would be to go into the multi Wii and also make the, uh, the correct adjustments there to tailor the flight, the flight, uh, the feel of the uh, machine to, to your liking. But anyway, so basically we're going to leave the travels at 100%. And dual rates, expos, all that stuff, we're leaving all that linear, 100% straight across. Um, and that is going to basically complete this section of the, um, of the setup here for radio setup. Okay, folks, uh, section two here is going to cover real quickly. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's the binding procedure for uh, binding your satellite receiver to function with the uh, current 3D... Uh, reversed rotation quads here. Um, basically, uh, the current uh, format that we have in use here is going to be on the multi-Wii. It only uses uh, the satellite receiver. And it's really nice because you're able to ditch the bird's nest that's associated with all the patch wires going from the standard receiver on a small light quad. Um, it's going to help you get rid of all that bird's nest of wires and uh, keep things really simple and clean and uncluttered and light keeps weight off of the machine, which is always a good thing for things that are uh, flying. Um, anyhow, uh, so what you're going to be doing, since we're only going to be using a satellite, you say, well, how do I get that to bind? Um, pretty simple and easy, common sense would uh, denote it. You're basically going to bind it with one of your uh, standard full-size receivers here. Uh, once this is bound as normally, uh, like a normal, uh, it's going to be used in a normal setup, uh, you, once this is fully bound, you could then you then unplug it, and you're going to be plugging this into uh, into the little uh, provided patch cable that's on the quad, and uh, it will function just as though it's on a full size receiver. But like I said, what what you do is you just go through your normal binding process, uh, bind it up. I've got a two cell lipo here. I'm going to power this up with uh, this lipo is hooked to a regulator, six volt regulator. You know, make sure your voltage range is all happy with the equipment you're using. Again, consult your manuals for all this hardware and firmware and whatnot. Uh, and just bind it as normal. Uh, plug this guy in here. We've got some uh, lights that blink at us, telling we're in a binding mode. Uh, pretty simple binding. Uh, I'm gonna, I already had it selected on the model I wanted to bind uh, for this machine. I'm gonna hold down the bind button, power on. And uh, how is uh, binding 
and voila, yeah, the lights go solid. Uh, everything is bound. Very good. And uh, basically, so from there, you can now uh, disconnect disconnect your uh, power and your bind plug and uh, disconnect this. And what you're gonna end up with now is you have, you'll be getting rid of all this stuff and the bird's nest that would be associated with that and clutter. And you'll have a nice, clean, simple setup. And this is gonna get plugged into the uh, small patch cord that's provided uh, that comes off of the multi-wee. And it keeps things really simple, light and clean, like I said. And that uh, one item I also wanted to mention with regards to the use of a single satellite receiver on this, um, while you have the benefit of losing a lot of the wires and the clutter and the weight um, that go along with the full-size receiver, unfortunately, um, the downside is you do lose the functionality of the fail-safe. So, again, when you're using a standalone um, receiver, a standalone satellite receiver, you will lose this fail-safe functionality. So, basically, what's going to happen is... Um, uh, in the extremely unlikely event that there's a break in the radio transmission or the radio turns off or whatever, the fail-safe, uh, what I'm seeing is when I have just this plugged in to the multi-rotor, what I'm seeing is that uh, last seen signal seems to hold. That's what the multi-wee seems to be doing with the information. Uh, it's, it just stays on the last seen signal. So uh, just something I wanted to note with regards to the use of a single satellite receiver for uh, a receiver on this uh, 3D quad. All right.